Tonight, we start again in Ukraine, where Russia's sickening assault on their neighbor continues for a fifth straight day. Ukrainian forces have been slowing Putin's advances. It's David versus Goliath as they follow the example of their brave president. When I was running for the president, I'd say that each of us is a president because all of us carry the responsibility for our country, for our beautiful Ukraine. And now it happened so that each of us is a warrior, a warrior in his or her right place. And I'm sure that each of us will win. Glory to Ukraine. Today, the nation's second largest city of Kharkiv faced an intense barrage of bombings as Russia looks to close in on the country's key population centers. The move mirrors their actions over the weekend, where several cities were also shelled with Russian rockets. Putin's forces are being accused of targeting innocent Ukrainian neighborhoods as the death toll continues to rise. And unfortunately, the worst is yet to come. New satellite images show a major buildup of Russian forces just miles outside of the capital city of Kiev. And earlier today, U.S. officials addressed this movement. Clearly, we continue to see Russian forces uh, uh, move on or move try to move closer to so they can move on Kyiv from the ground. Um, uh, we still assess that they're uh, outside the city center. Mr. Putin still has at his disposal significant combat power. He hasn't moved all of it into Ukraine, but he's moved the majority of it. He still has a lot that he hasn't moved into Ukraine. Um, it's combined arms, um, and it's not insignificant. So Putin's making his move into Kiev with even more troops waiting in the wings as the city prepares for a bloody siege. And this follows Putin's announcement yesterday that he was putting his nuclear forces into special combat readiness, a heightened alert status that brings back memories of the Cold War. The State Department evaluated this move earlier. This sort of provocative uh, rhetoric, more than being unnecessary, it is, it is dangerous. Uh, it adds to the risk of miscalculation. It, it should be uh, avoided. Uh, we are assessing President Putin's directive at this time. As I think you have uh, heard us say, we see no reason uh, to change our own uh, alert levels. But in the face of all of this, the world is rushing to Ukraine's aid. The U.S. and Germany have each agreed to send Stinger missiles to their ally, while Ukraine has formally applied to join the European Union. And now even Switzerland says it's going to freeze Russian assets, going against the nation's long-standing position of neutrality in international conflicts. Luckily, these sanctions are having an effect. As Russia's economy crumbles, nearly half of Russia's central bank assets have been frozen in the last 24 hours. And the value of Russia's currency, the ruble, is in the gutter. Hyperinflation could be around the corner in Mother Russia. So as fighting and sanctions intensify, negotiations took place in Belarus. But peace was hard to find, as Russia continues to demand official recognition of its control of Crimea, while insisting Ukraine can never, ever join NATO.